Hi everyone, I've been dilly dallying about dipping in this and finally ended up dipping in this pool. Now, now although I'm in Mumbai, the water temperature wasn't as warm as I expected. There is a bit of a breeze and it got me thinking about uh, cold water immersion. Now, of course, I've swum in much colder water, but the principle is really about the temperature difference and the cold water exposure to the skin and the body and the health benefits that have been postulated with regards to cold water immersion. So what has been postulated is that exposure to cold water has a number of health benefits. These include, firstly, anti-inflammatory responses, a reduction in oxidative stress, and a reduction in a number of other inflammatory markers. Secondly, exposure to cold water results in increase in a number of neurotransmitters, a lot of them that have an impact on stress regulation and mood, dopamine, noradrenaline. They also talk about the increase in cortisol levels and an adaptive stress response as a result. Thirdly, there are benefits on insulin resistance, whereby exposure to cold water or cold water immersion, CWI as it's uh, often termed, improves insulin sensitivity, thereby reducing insulin resistance. Now, although these are the biological benefits, some of the confounding factors that are difficult to, of course, adjust for, to really say that it's the cold water immersion that improves mood, for example, as there have been uh, case series and case reports, there has been a case that has uh, documented a single exposure to cold water in a patient that resulted in an improvement in mood. However, many of the studies, when you look at it, uh, have included young, fit, healthy individuals. So it's difficult to really state that it is the cold water immersion by itself, particularly because of confounding factors which include the activity itself, the exposure to nature the motivation, the purpose uh, for individuals that are actually taking those steps to go into uh, a particular place to expose themselves to cold water, for example. So the motivation itself is a factor to be controlled for. Furthermore, the social benefits, many of these uh, cold water activities include social environments where people go together uh, early in the morning, for example, to, for a swim. Furthermore, it also includes these individuals may have a different diets, for example, different lifestyle factors uh, that also act as confounding factors. Nonetheless, there do seem to be potential benefits with regards to cold water immersion. Having said that, it does not come without risk because there are two factors to take into account with CWI. Firstly, there is what's known as a diving response and secondly, the cold water shock response. The diving response uh, states that when there is exposure of cold water to the nostrils and the face, there is profound bradycardia associated with hypotension. Whilst the cold water shock response results in the opposite, the sympathetic activity increases, tachycardia as a result, peripheral vasoconstriction and hypertension, whilst previously you've got hypotension. Now it is postulated that this autonomic nervous system split between sympathetic drive increase versus parasympathetic drive increase can increase the risk of arrhythmias. And there have been cases of sudden death and death as a result of drowning with CWA. So it doesn't come without risk. It's something that one has to be very careful about as uh, there have been other studies that have also looked at the impact on cardiac uh, health with individuals exposing themselves to CWI. So hope that this was helpful in some way or the other, um, a risk benefit analysis with uh, cold water uh, immersion. With that in mind, see you soon again in another video. Until then, um, I think I'll go take another dip.